Hi guys, welcome to another video from Paul here at CCTV Systems UK. Today we're going to talk about Hikvision PTZ cameras. We do lots of videos on the fixed lens stuff and some of the autofocus zooms, but PTZ cameras are a little bit more complicated, so when we test them, we actually put them on an outdoor test for three months. And these cameras that are in front of us have been out on test. Um, this one on the left hand side was out for three months. It's now on the shelf behind me. I haven't looked at it since. And this one is out on test at the moment and it comes back in tomorrow, which is Monday. And that will have done its three months trial as well. They are both um, network cameras, of course, so run down Cat5 or Cat6. These aren't the coax types, but they are medium-sized dome cameras, and that's why we wanted to do a little bit of a, a video on these. They're middle range, um, slightly less than middle money, um, but have some great features on them. So... I just thought I'd tell you a bit about both of them, uh, the pros and cons really. So let's just have an honest test on what is good and what's not so good about them. If I remember rightly, I won't give you all the letters that are in the model number. Um, I think this is a 4220i and I think this is a 225i if memory serves. Now both have been just replaced by a slightly newer model. I think that's now what not a 225i, it's the 425i, even though that one is still available. And I can't quite remember what replaced the 4220, but it's out there. But either way, these two cameras are still current, so you can still buy them, and obviously the slightly newer versions of them as well. Now, what the people ask, what's the first question that people ask when you talk about PTZ cameras? pan, tilt and zoom. Well, it's the Z, zoom. How far can I zoom in with that camera and see at a distance? That's the first thing we get asked. So, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison here. Both these cameras can be nice and wide, obviously when they're backed off, and then they can zoom in. So when you back them out, they get very, very wide. This one is 4.8 millimetres. This one no, sorry, no, that one's 4.7 millimetres, that one's 4.8, that's right. And this one will zoom into 94 millimetres, and that will zoom into 120 millimetres. So, at its maximum, 94 and 120. So, 120 millimetres is further. And that's why this one on the left is a 20 times optical zoom, and this one on the right is a 25 times optical zoom but don't let that fool you these cameras were mounted in identical positions so it's easy to pick a spot out there zoom it in and have a look how good the actual picture is and both in night and day the camera on the left was far superior now you could argue successfully that that's because it doesn't quite zoom in as far that does 94 millimetres, that one does 120. Let's just say 100 metres in total. They both do it with ease. That one's just not as clear. And I suspect it's nothing to do with the actual lens itself. I think it's to do with this glass hood that's on this particular camera here. Because obviously that one doesn't have it. And I think that just distorts the picture ever so slightly. It's not a great deal, but that one is better. Simple as that. And here's another odd one. When you consider that one zooms further than this one, this model only has 50 metres infrared, and that has 100 metres. So if you can imagine them both then zoomed in at their maximum on a night in a very, very dark place. We're not talking about a street or something like that. Imagine looking down a field or a really big road that's pitch black, that one is far superior because it has 100 metres infrared, whereas that one has 50. On top of that, when you talk about the infrareds, this particular model has the auto-adjustable um, infrareds on them. So 
At the side of the lens, there are two banks, and each bank has three infrared lights in it. So this camera can, if you zoomed in as far as it'll go, will have all three lights on on each side, so six infrared lights in total. But of course, if you move it very quickly, or you've got it attached to a line crossing detection event, so it forgets what it's doing and goes directly to the front of your garage, say, uh, where you've got a line crossing detection mark on your cam other camera, this can zoom back down to 15 metres very quickly, and it will bring the infrared light down which is great because you don't want the 100 meters of infrared it's maximum in a space that's only 15 meters long because obviously a person who's walking at 15 meters would literally look like casper the ghost you'd see no facial features and they just look white because that's what an infrared light that can do 100 meters would look like it just it'd just be so bright it'd be impossible to see so because these are staged, they're auto adjusting. If it's at a low, if it's at a, a small zoom, one light will come on on each side. If it's a medium zoom, then it'll activate another set of LEDs, so there'll be four going. And then if it's, it's maximum zoom, the other two on either side will light up, so it puts all six on. Great, great technology. And that's why... <gasps> That gets the points because it's just better it's a better cleaner picture and i've got to say it's a better looking device i don't think there's anybody who thinks that that is better looking than that is there <laughs> don't prove me wrong please because <laughs> that looks great that looks a bit gaudy to me now pros and cons this is always a fair test from us and there is something that does have to be mentioned. And this is the elephant in the room. This camera on the right hand side has the auto tracking software built into it, which is very, very impressive when you consider the size of that camera. This one does not. Um, one click of a button, log on to it, one click of a button, then press apply and the auto tracking is on and it works really well. Um, couple of things it doesn't like it doesn't like cars zooming and zipping past if you're very very close to them because clearly it can't keep up um, and it's absolutely no good at all if you've got trees or bushes that move in your garden or around your unit because of course it will see the movement of the trees and it will auto track onto them so that's no good another thing of course this glass lens here, which is loosely related to it, when you get very heavy rain, the droplets of rain get onto this um, glass shield that's in front of the lens, and it drives the auto tracking software absolutely bonkers. But if you can imagine that auto tracking software in this camera that doesn't have the glass lens, uh, the glass cover over its lens. That would be fantastic. In fact, I'm going to stick my neck out here and say that if the auto tracking software from this camera was in this one, I genuinely would not stock this. I wouldn't put it on our company shelf. Uh, I would only install it if people asked for it specifically by its model number. And then, of course, doing my job correctly, I would give them the pros and cons and I think um, it's got more downsides than up when you consider this is its brother or sister or whatever you want to call it. So there's two medium size IP PTZ cameras. So what I'm going to do now is, like I say, this one doesn't come off its test while tomorrow. And this is why we've done the video today. But this one is on the shelf behind me. It was taken down three months ago. So... I'm going to bring it over to the table now and power it up. Um, just excuse me a little bit because obviously it'll still be mucky because I genuinely, genuinely haven't touched it since it came back in off test. So here we go. Let's get rid of these. There we go. And this is the 4220, which was obviously the box on the left. I'll just... Take that out of there and show you this camera. That is 
quite a nice looking dome. Medium size, so it's not too big. Remember, there is a couple of larger versions of this with the auto tracking facility inside it, but they are huge. You know, the two and a half times, nearly three times the size of this. Um, so they might be good for domestic use. Uh, sorry, uh, for uh, commercial use, but no good for domestic use. And of course, there is the cost of consideration. These are medium domes for just less than medium money. Um, I've not got any arm on it at the moment, but clearly a flat mounting uh, bracket will go onto this for flat walls and the one with the 90 degree sliver cutting to the back of it so it can go on the corner of a building and look all the way around. Um, if you look on the top of it, it's got the little carabiner clip and obviously all arms that this will fit on have a little uh, ledge on them that you can clip that onto and clearly it will hang in midair while you're wiring these up and it's perfectly safe. It also has, because it's a network camera, the female RJ45 connection there for the picture to go down and it's PoE, so of course it can take its power down that as well if you've got a PoE injector. If you don't have a PoE injector, but you've just got the Cat5 or even better Cat6, it's got a two pin plug here with male and female on for 12 volts. And there's a three pin plug also here for audio in and out. And then there's one for the ground as well. So you can plug a microphone into this and hide it in the actual arm. And if you've got some outdoor speakers on a big commercial property, you can run the cables from this, uh, a negative and a positive from the out, down to your amplifier. Make sure the amplifier's on whatever input this is you've got it plugged into. And you can press the talk back button on your mobile phone and shout at people through your outdoor speakers. Scare them half to death. We like that a great deal. So I'll just turn this over. Again, bear with me, because I've not genuinely not touched this camera in all that time, hence the reason why it's as mucky as what it is. Da -da. It's on a bit of a slant, but there you go. I'll just introduce this because I do have a PoE uh, switch in the uh, room that I'm in now. It'll take about 30 seconds to power up. Um, it is worth mentioning that there is a coaxial type of PTZ that looks just like this now, exactly the same dimensions. Doesn't quite zoom as far, and the infrared lights aren't quite as powerful as this, but it will run down standard RJ, R RG59 cable. Uh, so if you take a standard uh, dome camera down or bullet camera, you can put this directly in its place because there is now a coax version. That's now starting up, I believe. There we go. No reason to believe it didn't work, of course. It worked when we took it down um, after its three months um, test. Uh, obviously, this camera's upside down at the moment, just so you can see it booted up. There you go, it's finished its um, its preliminary startup. But what is excellent about this camera is, if you look out in a straight line at zero degrees, obviously the camera will tilt downwards, so it can look around. But this camera, has a negative 15 degrees, so it can actually look slightly upwards. And the camera that was at the side of it, or should I say the box, which was the 225i with the auto tracking facility, um, would only go up to minus five degrees. So if your building's quite low and you need to look up a yard, um, this is the one for you. So there you go. That's literally ready to go. If I go on, to, now it's networked. It's coming down the PoE switch. If I go and click on the camera um, installation page and press add, this camera becomes immediately available to the Height Vision DVR and all of its facilities are at our disposal. Hence the reason why all Height Vision DVRs have now the facility of either one or two 
networking cameras depending on whether they're the two or five million megapixel variants so there you go that works well um i'm gonna go put that on my house that's been such a good camera while it's on test i think it's worth going on to my property and if that isn't the biggest recommendation from an experienced av engineer like me who's been doing this 20 years plus i don't know what is you know this video is probably not for you um it's a good good camera and let's just hope that they put the auto tracking facility inside a medium dome like this and it will be an even better seller than it is at the moment so i'll bring these two cameras back the 225i and the 4220i so there you go guys that's a another little video on uh, hike vision products today the ptz's if you have any questions give us a shout drop us an email send us a message on our facebook page and we'll do our very very best to help you out these videos tend to have to wait while a weekend, of course. We are installers, and through the week, it's madness, specifically when we're just coming out of the uh, lockdown period for COVID-19. So the videos have to wait while the weekend, and it's Sunday today, so here's a little video for you. Other than that, all I need to say is enjoy the rest of your weekend, and this is Paul logging off at CCTV Systems UK. And I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye now.